When I film Instagram videos, I do the pour like a million times, whereas this one I only have one shot. It's incredibly stressful. Okay, so this is miso mac, aptly named because it's not macaroni and cheese. However, it is kind of like my ode to Annie's macaroni and cheese. I bought Shell's pasta for the exact same reason. It's a creamy macaroni that looks like macaroni and cheese, tastes like macaroni and cheese, but there's no cheese in it, and you can so easily make it dairy-free. It's a fusion of a bunch of my favorite things. I'm using miso and furikake from Japanese cuisine, and then we're gonna be combining two French mother sauces. We're gonna be using techniques from bechamel, which is my favorite sauce ever, and techniques from a village. Now there are five French mother sauces, bechamel, espagnol, velouté, tomate, and hollandaise. I didn't go to culinary school, I'm just very passionate about French cuisine. Okay, so let's break down the sauce before we actually go to my stovetop and start making it. A bechamel, which is how I'm gonna to refer to it from now on, even though we're combining a bechamel and a velouté, is the easiest of the five French mother sauces. It serves as a base for so many different types of foods. And what I love is that when you add just a few ingredients, you can make it into like a really amazing pasta sauce. And with this, you can add like a toasted veggie, you can add like chickpea pasta for protein, and then it's like a complete meal. I personally like having like crispy chickpeas with it and then like some kale mixed in, but for today, we're just making the mac and cheese. Okay, so I'm just prepping my ingredients for the sauce, which could not be easier. We have a cup of milk and then a cup of stock. It's a lovely noise. But I'm actually using the only milk I have on hand, which is a plant-based milk. I haven't noticed a major difference between normal milk and plant-based milk, so use what you have. And then the base of the sauce is gonna be butter. Same rule applies here. You can use this butter, you can use vegan butter. I've never noticed a difference. Now, a bechamel sauce is a base of butter and then you add flour, and then you gradually whisk in milk. And a velouté is when you have butter, flour, and then you gradually whisk in stock. So since we're combining stock and milk, we're creating a similar cream sauce, but it's just a little bit thinner. I'm using white miso, which is a younger miso. It hasn't been fermented for as long. Red miso has usually been fermented longer. I like this because it gives it like a very mac and cheesy color, but you can also totally use red miso. You'll be fine. So let's go to the stove. Let's get the sauce started, and you can see that it comes together in like seven minutes, maybe less. We'll see. Now I'm starting off with a roux, which is where we're taking equal parts fat and equal parts flour and toasting it down together. When I say equal parts, I'm very loose with it. So I'm using about four tablespoons of flour, four tablespoons of butter, and getting that on the stove. So I have my Dutch oven, which is where I'm gonna make the entire sauce. You can use a skillet, you can use anything that you have. I like that this is enameled, and I like that we can put the pasta directly into it. But I have that, I have my butter, again, horribly and loosely measured. And this is on medium heat. You don't want it to go really any higher because you don't want to scorch the butter, you don't want the butter to brown. And this sauce is a quick process, but we really don't use like too intense of a heat on it. So butter in, and then I'm gonna let that melt down until it's all melted. The flour will go right in after we melt down all of the butter. Again, keeping it on like a low heat because you want that butter to stay yellow. If you add it and it immediately like hisses and fizzles, that means your butter's starting to scorch. The milk solids are gonna start to toast and you don't really want that. Do you like my Star Wars spatula? I love it. Thank you. Okay, so the butter's fully melted, and then we just add in the flour. Now, flour has a really, like, raw taste. If you've eaten raw cookie dough, you know what raw flour tastes like. So what we're doing is we're simultaneously getting a little flavor from toasting the butter, but also cooking out that raw flour taste. You can see it immediately start to thicken up. So loose measurements, I'd say about two tablespoons of miso. We can always taste and adjust later but I'm adding it right in. And miso, if you're not familiar, is fermented soy. It's a, it's a trendy ingredient right now because it is so good. It not only adds saltiness to literally everything, but it adds like a richness and like a next level umami flavor. I know I'm using that a lot as my buzzword of today. Umami. But it just like gives so much being just one ingredient. And this, minus the miso, is traditionally what's called a roux. Now, my dad's Cajun, so I'm familiar with roux in soups or stews like gumbo, where you would cook down a roux until it was almost like dark, dark brown or like 
sometimes like black and you just get more and more flavor in it but with a bechamel or even with a velouté you really don't want the color to get that dark because you don't want that depth of toasted flavor you want to keep it pretty light and you'll still get a lot of richness out of it so look at how it's now like what is this loose cookie dough texture now it's time to add our mix of cream and stock and this is all lump management from now on if you have a silicone whisk that's amazing i don't because small kitchen don't want more things but just we're adding the milk and the stock a little bit at a time and when i first made a bechamel i was in culinary class in college i freaked out because i was like am i doing it wrong but you'll see that it immediately thickens into like a nice paste and then we add more and the key i've found to doing this is adding a little bit at a time so my milk and stock right now is about room temperature a little bit colder because i took it out of the fridge and then as soon as you start to see it like <laughs> hey walter as soon as you start to see it reach smoothness then that means it's a sign to add more and you'll do this in about five or six rounds until all the stock and milk is gone we've reached a creaminess level which means it's time for a bit more and once you reach this consistency that's when it's okay to taste and adjust as you need to I cannot wait for you guys to actually try it because it's like uncanny how mac and cheesy it tastes. Not mac and cheesy, boxed mac and cheesy. Because the miso just adds so much to it, even though it's just like a few ingredients. Normally in a perfect world, I would be doing my pasta at the exact same time. However, we're filming this and I get stressed. But I'm gonna start my pasta, cook it al dente. I got shells in honor of Annie's mac and cheese. And then keep this warm. I'm reserving just a bit of this because like let's say you're making this and you are having people come over and you want it to still be like super creamy when they arrive reserve just a bit of this because this will continue to thicken and you can just easily thin it out with this and then just combine it right when you need it so i'm gonna get started on the pasta then i'm gonna get started on like a really quick furikake that i'm gonna make for the topping and then we're gonna be done and that took like uh we're like seven minutes in. This is a stupid fast recipe. Okay, now we have a few things going, so things are gonna start moving quickly. I'm gonna make a really quick hirakake. Not traditional at all, not authentic at all. It's just a really easy topping to do, especially for this pasta. It kind of goes with like the miso flavor of it all. And I just think it like looks really cool. But furikake is traditionally dehydrated fish nori and sesame seeds and there's always a few other additions i'm just doing nori sesame seeds and a bit of sugar and it's super easy we just take a few sheets of nori and crunch it up asmr is that i i make asmr videos but i don't consume asmr that's my big secret these aren't just decorative i do use my sesame seeds way more than I use other ingredients because they're just such a good topper. Some black sesame. This is already toasted sesame, but like a little extra toasting doesn't hurt. And then I have a little bit of coconut sugar, which normal furikake uses normal sugar. I just found coconut sugar gives it like an enhanced, really like nutty flavor. So just like a teaspoon of that. And then just a bit of salt. You could also use MSG if you have it. That would be so good. And that's it, a really quick furikake, not traditional by any means, but like fun to have. I'm gonna put it in the oven and we toast it for like two or three minutes. And yes, this is a salty sauce and yes, miso is salty, but we're still salting our pasta water. Flavor from the inside out. Shells in. See them in eight minutes. Sauce is done, taking it off the heat and then we're gonna take this pasta I know people are like big pasta water people, like always reserve your pasta water. I'm not saying don't, but I'm saying a thing that I like to do is just take this or like a slotted spoon. This is a spider. I bought it especially for this video and just transfer it straight into the sauce. You still get that pasta water for like emulsification, but you don't have to like reserve a ton of it. And then you've just used two pots to make dinner and a pan. 
for the fear of kake, but we won't we won't talk about that one. Okay, so stir it in. <laughs> Maybe not that much water transfer. A little bit of water transfer. Keep it cute. Also, hot debate in my household. Shell's better for mac and cheese or rigatoni better for mac and cheese? I'm deeply conflicted. I always find myself going to rigatoni. I feel like I'm a rigatoni girl, but shells can make like a little, a little mac and cheese pasta home. It's like a little bed for your cheese sauce to go into. But rigatoni is like a cheese sauce calzone. These are the things that keep me up at night. Okay, and if you're like, this is looking a little thin, don't worry, it'll continue to thicken. So just keep stirring it. You cannot tell me this doesn't look like Annie's mac and cheese, but the pasta water will help it get all saucy, glossy. This is my ultimate comfort food. By far my favorite thing to make. Oh no! <laughs> Shh, you're fine, you're oh. fine. Gonna get the furikake out of the oven, and then we're done. That was it, that's dinner. It's so easy. I'm so graceful in the kitchen. But yeah, this is all nice and toasty. Hi, Walter. He always knows. He's like, the time has come. It's time for my finale glamour shot. I got these plates at Target this weekend. They have literally changed my life. When I film Instagram videos, I feel like I do the pour like a million times, whereas this one I only have one shot. It's incredibly stressful. I mean, how can the mac and cheese look bad though? And a little bit of furikake for aesthetics, you know? And also for flavor, like this stuff is so good. That is the entire recipe. I'm a little shook because the last time we were here, we were doing sourdough and that took like seven hours, but this literally took like 10 minutes. It is such a weeknight staple for me. It is so easy. Once you have miso in your pantry, you will be using it on everything. And if you wanna make this a full meal, you can throw it with a protein. You can add a vegetable when you're adding it in with the sauce. Chickpea pasta is also great. It's just a super easy 10 minute dinner to like have in your back pocket. So I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or comments, tell me below and I hope to see you in the next one.